I don't know. If you look at the history of the WWE slash WWF, has anybody printed out their ticket better than Cody Rhodes? What we saw night number one of WrestleMania, as Corey Graves said, from undesirable to undeniable, that entrance bully was almost exactly like an entrance of Cody Rhodes that you saw three months ago on AEW TV from, from what he was wearing, from the colors, from the music, the American nightmare. I mean, unbel- I don't know if you've ever seen that in the history of this company. Vince McMahon once taught me a very important lesson. He said, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, the boys never really have me backed into a corner. But if they do, and they don't use that power against me, they're foolish businessmen. What Vince is trying to say is he, he controls everything. But every once in a while, if you're in the right place at the right time, and the planets are aligned and the stars are aligned, you might be in control of the situation. And if you don't use that to your benefit, shame on you. You're a foolish businessman. The stars aligned for Cody. Right place, right time. Contract expired in AEW. Something obviously went awry there. There was a disagreement with Cody and Tony, what that disagreement is. We can can sit here and discuss it, analyze it, guess, hypothesize, hypothesize, you name it. Could have been a creative differences. Could have been uh, that one guy wanted to invest in veterans while the other guy wanted to invest in the youth. Anything. But it put Cody in a position where he now became available to the WWE. And I think we heard Cody say in an interview that Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon flew down to see him. If Bruce and Vince are getting on a plane to come to see you, you know that you got something going on for yourself. You know that you're in a position of power. You know that you're in a strong negotiating position. You know you're working with a strong chessboard. He told them what he wanted. And I'm sure it was not an easy negotiation. I'm sure it wasn't like, here's what I want. And, you know, fine, pal, you can have everything. I'm sure everything was fought for. But at the end of the day, Cody got what he wanted. And this is not Stardust. And this is not the Cody with the face shield. The WWE has purchased an act that was created in AEW. Cody Rhodes created this version of himself in the competition's backyard. And that's what they bought. And you talk about the follow-up. Tonight, I don't want to look past, I don't want to just glaze over what we just saw over the past two nights. But when it comes to Cody, tonight will be very, very important. Agreed. And I don't know, Bully, if you're Cody, if you could write a book better than what he's been able to write over the last four years. Think about it. You know, he was a mid-carder with the WWE. Now, he's somebody that really never had that WrestleMania moment. They never put a lot of of stock into him. Even Bully, after the passing of his father, they still didn't let go of that bad character and that bad gimmick that they had for him. And he left. And listen, he was unhappy. He didn't like it. He left. He reinvented himself, and he did it. He, he, He wrestled on the indies. He wrestled with Impact. He wrestled with Ring of Honor. And then he helped form... AEW. And you know what? When head to head against NXT and bully, the NXT that he went in, went up against is no more. And then he came back home to the WWE and he did it his way. Like he always said, and what Corey Graves said in that call, undesirable to undeniable. I don't think you can find better words to describe the journey of Cody Rhodes. And when it comes to undeniable, just how undeniable Will Cody Rhodes be? I believe that this will be the... It's all about the polka dots. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. He is going to go... He's going back to wash away 
the memory of those polka dots. The Rhodes name, by the, I believe that by the time Cody is done, the Rhodes name, I believe for the first time, will be synonymous with a WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Otherwise, there's no reason for him to go back. It's not about the money. I, I, I really don't think it's about the money with Cody. And if it was, Tony's got more money than Vince. This had to do initially with a disagreement, probably. A, a, not a disagreement, but a difference of opinions when it came to the vision of a company. And then Cody probably said, I'm going to go right what I believe was a wrong for the longest time. And we can all agree that no matter how great Dusty Rhodes was and he was able to get over polka dots, he should have never been in polka dots. I, I think agree. Cody is going to finally wash away the, 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 the bad taste of the polka dots. I think he's going to move on to bigger things than Dusty ever was able to do in a ring. And we, we, you know, we talked about for weeks, why? Why would Vince bring Cody back? After, after watching Friday, Friday, I'm sorry, Saturday night, Dave, what's your opinion as to why Vince would bring Cody back? I think that he looks at Cody now as somebody that has so much stock, somebody who's a creative genius, somebody who had the balls to go head to head with him and one of his products and win somebody who bet on himself and was able to recreate himself. And I think Vince looks at him now as somebody, Hey, I need more people like a Cody Rhodes. I think he looks at him now as the present of what he wants this company to look like over the next two to three years. I really truly believe that you were in Texas stadium the other night. Obviously there was video up on our social media about your reaction when Cody came out. On TV, it sounded like he got a massive ovation, a great pop, not Stone Cold Steve Austin-esque, but on par with the Hardys from Mania 33. Yes. Is that the way it was live, or was there anything pumped in? No. The, anybody that's talking about pumped-in crowd noise from WrestleMania – being there live and being amongst those people, there was no pumped in crowd noise that I could tell at WrestleMania 38. That was a definite organic reaction of those fans when Cody came out on Saturday night. So does that speak to the strength of AEW then? I think a little bit too, but, but bully let's face it. Who was Cody when he left? He was a, he was a mid card talent in the WWE. I don't think a lot of people were shedding tears when Cody left the WWE, I don't think the WWE was pulling their hair out when Cody left. He was not a main eventer. He was not a world champion. But this guy who came back, you're right. This was the American nightmare. And as soon as they saw that slogan come up across their screen in AT&T Stadium, that place went nuts. So I agree, Bully. It has a lot to do with Cody. It has a lot to do with the machine that is the WWE. But I think you're right. I think it shows you the popularity now of AEW and how much of a force they are in the pro wrestling world. Tonight, I would give Cody Rhodes a microphone. Tonight, I'd let Cody Rhodes go out there and I'd let Cody Rhodes say whatever he wanted to say, or at least as much as the WWE will ever allow somebody to go out there. I want to hear a real story. Nothing canned. This should be be about getting out of the shadow of dusty that's because that's been cody's real life story whenever you people speak to Cody, hey i'm even guilty of it whenever you speak to cody it's hard not to mention dusty's name in some way shape or form or ask a question about dusty or ask about a memory or something everybody talks about dusty i think in I think within 20 to 30 years, Cody wants people just mentioning the word, the name Cody. And I think that I think Cody has had to live in Dusty's shadow even more than Dustin. 
Would you agree or not? I would agree. I, I, I think a lot of people lean on Cody a lot more. They expect a lot more from Cody. And maybe bully with Cody, this is going to be a situation like Charlotte Flair. You know, obviously, we all know Charlotte Flair is Ric Flair's, Ric Flair's daughter. But do we really think of Ric Flair immediately when we think of Charlotte? I don't think we do anymore. I think she's created herself as such a force in women's wrestling, in the world of pro wrestling. I don't think we immediately think of Rick. And I think when it's all said and done with Cody, it's going to be the same thing for him. Though, I will say this, Bully, and it brought a tear to my eye on Saturday night when he did the hand jive and gave Seth the bionic elbow as a tribute to his dad. That, to me, was a WrestleMania moment on Saturday night. Uh, I wish you would have stretched that one out a little bit more and gave us quintessential Dusty. I think he went through it a little too quick. I liked him doing the, uh, I liked him doing the cartwheel and uh, getting rid of the Stardust uh, thing. Yeah. I got to tell you, something happened. I'm almost positive it was in this ma match, and I want to give Corey Graves credit real quick. I think there was a, poor, there was a, uh, a moment in the match where Seth Rollins, was kicking Cody in the face and Corey called them the Kawada kicks. And I know this is just a tiny little thing. Do you even know what Corey Graves was talking about? No, I, I, I couldn't really hear the commentary being there. So okay. I missed a lot of that. Corey Graves put over the kicks and called them the Kawada kicks, which is exactly what they were. And I popped so hard because Kawada is a legendary wrestler. One of the best sellers, if not the most genuine seller in the history uh, of, of the business, in my opinion. Uh, and I just popped huge for Corey mentioning the Kawada kicks during Cody and Rollins. And we're sitting here talking about Cody, Cody, Cody hats off to Seth too. Oh Seth did goodness, a phenomenal yeah. job. Those guys had a banger of a match. Lots of people saying that that was their match of mania. Well, I think it's between two matches. I think when you look at WrestleMania, it's either Cody and Seth Rollins or the next match that we're going to,